So here we have our track for Sherlock. It's at 92 BPM on a 6.8 meter. So um, here's how it sounds. Pretty straightforward track. Let's start off with the drums. Um, we use a really standard set here called Brooklyn, under drum kit Brooklyn, and all these are preset. And um, we send it to a bus, which is a space designer that has pretty large reverb, 6.1 seconds, ancient church plus. Now it's got that nice big vibe about it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, for the opening, you know, we wanted this crescendo and um, we had to play around with the MIDI, of course, just to make sure it's, you know, um, really having the crescendo. So it was the snares that came in first and then the toms. So you get that kind of that kind of crescendo build up about it. And also, um, all the drums are actually quantized to a 16th note, or at least most of the uh, regions there. And uh, you can see that we added the flam to about 10 ticks, just to give it that little live feeling about it. Also, the quantized strength is at 80%. So you're not fully locking it to the lines over here. Um, you want to give it a bit of life about drums. So make sure you do a bit of a quant lower your quantized strength and uh, do a bit of quantized flamming. So this is how it sounds. Pretty straightforward. I think it's quite nice sounding drums. Um, and the next step is to use a really standard uh, under factory acoustic pianos, Yamaha grand piano, um, just the standard grand piano that you have. Didn't add any reverb and it's playing pretty much straight up stuff. Really, really straight up stuff to sit in the background. I like to put all the rhythmic basses in so that we can get uh, something to work on top when we put the other instruments. And uh, this is also quantized to a 16th note. So if you put it with the drums and here's how it sounds. And now, comes to the interesting bits because we're not really using any real guitars. I would honestly use a real guitar because it would sound more natural, but for the benefit of people who don't play guitar, I actually use an EXS instrument. And what I used was under guitars, electric guitars, twangy electric, and I send it through an app. And in this case, I use a crunch which is a gemstone crunch. So I wanted something that's a bit more twang, more kind of Stratocaster type sound, isn't particularly fat. Um, and you get that kind of... And then we have something that's on this side, on the right side, pan to the right. Uh, also a vintage strat with an amp as well, and in this case, is a mini tweed crunch. So basically what I like to do is have two guitars that um, kind of play off each other, playing very similar things, same chords, one pan to the left, one pan to the right with different amps. And it kind of works out. It's, of course, if you want to sort of get that guitar sound, you kind of need to spread it out, right? So all your chords, you need to spread it out like a 
uh, strum and um, same thing with the other side so you need to kind of get it kind of so here's how they sound Still okay, but if you pair it together with everything, it starts sounding like a real band. So you get that nice sort of stereo panned guitars. I don't pan it really hard, I pan it about you know 20 plus to each side um, at about the same mix level. Now here's where it becomes interesting because uh, the 12 string acoustic guitar, there are no really um, strummy type loops that I found to be really suitable for this within the Apple loops. So I thought we had to play something. And fortunately, Logic in itself uh, has something quite interesting under guitars, acoustic guitars, this is 12 string acoustic chords, which is actually pretty perfect for this. Um, okay, here's how it works. You get a little strum, and you get a minor strum. So you get major strums and minor strums. Now, two major strums, two minor strums. And it works for all the different ones. A, oh, this is a, yeah, a major, A minor. And since this song is in A minor, so what you can do is something like this. You need to press on the pedal and you go. So you kind of get that strum about it. Actually, it's pretty convincing if you put it in the mix. And then if you want a D major. So you, you can get quite a bit of convincing strumming and here's how it sounds. It's not like perfect. But in a mix, it can do. And if you put it together with the electric guitars and the drums, kind of works, right? So the next thing we need is a bass, and this one's really straightforward. Uh, it's an EXS24 instrument as well, under bass, electric bass, thumb stroke bass, because it's kind of like the unassuming kind of bass, you want it to sit in the background. Does it work? And if you pair it with the drums, you know, you kind of get a nice rhythm going about it. They complement each other. So you get a kind of a bass on the kick, dum dum cha, and uh, that's kind of like the band done actually. If you put it together like this, so that's what you get for the band bit. Now on to the orchestral bit. Orchestral bit started with a bass and I picked a legato bass from the strings library just to add that low end that's droning on. These notes are really long notes so they just kind of like lower than that and I sent it to the same reverb as well. Now um, so if you add those bases together, they kind of sound like this. And the next thing is, uh, this is the main melody. And instead of violins, I actually use a string ensemble. I feel like it sounded richer and they're actually octaves of each other. So the melody goes in octaves. 
and I pan it slightly to the left because uh, if they're meant to be violins, they come from sort of the left uh, side a little bit of the image, stereo image, and here's how it sounds. And it's good to overlap a little bit so that you don't have a gap in between uh, the notes. This is just a small detail. And um, there's also another voice that we put underneath the strings, playing actually very similar melody to the string ensemble. And this is an orchestral choir chamber female ensemble. And you pair it together, gives it a bit more uh, life and interest about the main melody. And uh, there's an, actually there's a complementary melody, sort of like a counter melody, uh, being played by violas. And uh, this is under the strings, violas legato. It's under orchestral. There we go. And uh, this one has a really healthy amount of reverb. And it goes like that. And at the end, um, it goes from being the counter melody to joining the melody in octave. And an interesting thing is, if you listen closely, it actually becomes a major at the end. But this is the only indication that it becomes a major. The guitars actually don't play, and the melody just carrying the melody doesn't indicate the chords. Um, so if you put the strings together, here's how they sound. Here's everything together one more time. 